today we're going to be going up to uh, one of the greenhouses that we put up and uh, get them a whole bucket system, just a 10 bucket system. Uh, they needed just to get a 10 foot piece of 2 inch PVC pipe, schedule 40, and a 10 foot piece of 1 half inch PVC pipe, also schedule 40. You can use these bucket systems just about anywhere on your porch, you know, uh, just on a balcony. We've got somebody growing just on balcony now, which is fantastic. So they're not just for greenhouses. Okay, here we are. Beautiful small farm they've got up here. There's the two greenhouses we've put up earlier, and we're getting ready to put in their tin bucket system. Alright, so this bucket system is really, 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 really simple. <laughs> if you can get the buckets, you guys are lucky you've got a Menards up here. Best place to buy. They're all food grain. We're going to take them, we're going to drill each one of them about two inches up. Because that way, when the water comes in, we'll have that much water in each one to be able to wick up in between water. So it'll keep them watered all the time. First step is get your bucket about two inches up, one inch hole saw, center it in, and drill your hole. Okay. But you have your hole drill, just Get it nice and even, get any of the little loose ends off. That way, it, when you put the grommet in, it won't leak at all. Next step is take your three quarter inch grommet, work it in. That's that. And we're ready for the next part. Okay, now that we have all the buckets done with their grommets in, Next step, Kenny cutting 10 pieces of one half inch PVC. You can use just a small hand cutter. You can use a circular saw, whatever, but favorite tool I just found is Milwaukee tool. Awesome thing. Just don't get your thumb in the way. Or you'll, you'll have finger food. But they're awesome don't have a lot of PVC to cut uh, these not too expensive PVC cutters make sure you get the kind that can go for two inch and real easy to cut the half inch but uh, if you have a lot I suggest getting that other tool I was using. Well, you can see why this is one of my favorites one more trick on this is take this we want to bevel this edge. You can use sandpaper, whatever. You're going to use cinder blocks anyway. Just a little scrape on the edges. And it'll bevel it so it'll go into the grommets a lot easier. So after you have them beveled about like that, just clean them off. Dip them in water because it's a lot easier. And then we'll slide them in here. Okay, once they're ready to go, wet them, and then just work them in, just back and forth a little bit, until you have enough inside, so you have that. Getting these in is probably one of the hardest parts about doing these buckets. There's a couple tricks. One, make sure the ends are beveled so they go in first, wet them down, and then you can heat this with a heat gun or a hair dryer enough don't melt the bucket they'll go in pretty easy and then put them in squeeze them in and on the inside hold the inside part of the grommet so it doesn't push in and then work them in and that's that's it the elbows out next one half inch and they just go on like so and there's no need to glue there's no pressure, you're not going to have to worry about leaks. This is not for your head, FYI. Anyway, next is the netting that goes inside of the bucket. And you just put it on, it's elastic. Put it over the edges. And we're ready to go and fill up with perlite. And we will rinse the perlite right in here until the water 
uh, goes clear and we'll show you that next. I think the chickens are enjoying watching us, don't you? Yeah. So what we're gonna do is fill these up with perlite, then we're gonna rinse them until they're clear. When they run clear out of here, we're done, ready to go put in the system. So, uh, we were scooping them in, way too slow. I hate slow. So, pour in the perlite. Into each bucket. This is the, just the fastest way to go. And I don't think you need to see me doing this all of them, but make sure that the wind isn't blowing the powder back into your face. Because that white look just isn't that good. And it's not really good to breathe anyway. Randy's lovely assistant and wife, Jill. All you need to do is rinse with water, soak it, and when it starts running out here, wait till it runs a little bit clear, and you are done. And by the way, the longer you let them drain, the lighter they are to carry. So just let them drain out, be a little patient. Go have a nice tea or sandwich or something. Oh, it's my friend Brent. Hello. <laughs> hey. <laughs> this is their small farm, homestead, etc., etc. You Randy, name it, they've got it. Those systems are the best. Oh, thanks, 100%. man. I've paid you enough to say that. Yes. Huh? Cool. <laughs> anyway, so now we're going to be setting up the buckets in here, so we'll just figure out where they're going to go. So we'll set up the blocks where we want them, put a couple two by fours on, and then we'll set the buckets on them. Uh, since this one is without the loud coat, <laughs> thank goodness it's a little warm. Anyway, set up the buckets how you want them, you know, wherever you want to put them. Any configuration at all, but put them out first. So we have the exact length that we need. Set your cinder blocks down, and then we'll put a couple of two by fours on. We'll set the buckets on them, and then we'll set up a drain system. It's nice, you can use pretty much any boards you got laying around. Don't waste any money buying a bunch of stuff. Have your boards up here, buckets ready. Just set them on here. Fairly even spaced, move them afterwards, doesn't matter. Once we do have them in place, so we're going to mark the drain, drill the drain holes, and then we're ready to go. Ricola! Are we ready yet? <laughs> okay then. <laughs> we're going to be putting the drain together. 90 degree, piece of two inch. I had to cut this in half because it had to fit in my small car, so otherwise I wouldn't have to use the little connector. But it would not fit, didn't have a truck. So, what, go on, move on, move on. All right. So, place the block here, that elbow under the first one. If you have a single piece, you don't need a sleeve. That goes there. Elbow here. Now, with the drain pipe in place, we're gonna mark it right underneath line centered underneath each spout and then we're going to drill a one inch hole in the PVC at each mark and hook up for the drain you know it's your personality you're, in there you're wasting my batteries I'm wasting her battery she said okay back to this this stuff's so dry usually <laughs> no this is wet usually anyway so also one inch at each mark that we marked, all the way along here, and then we'll put it back up, and it'll be all lined up, perfect, ready to go. These pipes, so they fall down, maybe about a quarter down to a third down into this pipe. So we'll attach it here, and they'll go into this hole. Now that we have it all drilled, it's time to just set it up underneath. Here we go. Have one person at the other end, playing with the lower end. Line them up as he raises it. And we just line them all up in their holes. That's the fast way. We can do it just with individual buckets. The next step is we're going to hook up the pump, all the tubing, all the adapters, put them in. And then the next step is plugging in the pump and it runs. Okay, in the pump box there's different adapters. Use the half inch. If you don't want to measure it, just see which one fits. So there you go. Don't forget the washer. Done. 
really good tool at hand. Hand tight, done. Put it in the bucket. And we're ready to run our tuba. Okay, when you're putting this in and there's water, don't be in the bucket when you're plugging this in, all right? Just saying. There you go. Thanks, Brent. <laughs> okay, with the half inch tube connected to the pump in the, in the bucket, just lay, lay it out. You can see there's full anti, so you can do any kind of situation you want. And now we'll add in the adapters. Okay, so with the hose here, get about the midpoint. Midpoint of the bucket. Just cut it. Scissors, pruners, whatever. Okay, after you cut it, put the adapter in. Push it in all the way, both sides. And move on to the next one. Same thing. Cut. Oh, my finger! Okay, just kidding. Next adapter, we do that all the way down the line here. Now this tubing really does cut really easy with the scissors. We just happen to have a little pruning shears handy, so that's why we used it. All right, with all the adapter tees in place, these are all pre-cut in the kit. They just slide on the third piece. And what you want to do, make sure they're on good, is set them down in. This will keep the algae down once they're down in like that. Okay, so, and it will do this all the way along the way. To keep these in place, you can use just clothespins, or uh, I, I found that the, 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 the springy type tomato clips work really well. These are the little tomato clips we were talking about to hold the tubing to the buckets. Reminds me of a little Pac-Man. All right, an alternate method to the little clips is you can just intertwine them in the handles and that worked really well. This way you've got all the feeder lines down underneath here to keep control over any top algae. You'll still get some and it's not a big deal. Anyway, there we go. One of the things I forgot to say was on the very last one of the adapters, the T adapters, we have to stop the water. So your last piece slides on, fold this over, you can use a rubber band zip tie and you can even use a twist tie but just to stop the water on that last piece all right so the last step is marking the top so we can cut slot for the drain and for the pipe and for a cord and that way when we need to add water we could just take this off and add water make it real simple so all I'm doing is marking where I need to cut this and how far right here and that'll cut the drain well after we cut the top of the, the sump tank here this is what it looks like you've got your cut out where this goes a little slot for the hose here and a little slot for the electric cord that way when you go to refill and top off this just comes right off Right back on. Now there's little tot tabs on here. Cut those off so you don't have to keep playing with that. Anyway, that's that. One thing you do want to make sure of is that there's a fall down this way because we opposite direction won't work so well. Make sure the drain, so you have maybe half a bubble or so, it can be more, but just make sure that it drains downhill this way. The water doesn't like to drain uphill too well. Plug the pump in so all these are running. And now it'll just flow through, and we're done, ready to plant. Okay, Randy, so what's going to happen now? Well, besides me spraying you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Filling up the tank. We will put nutrients in here. The pump will pump the water up into these buckets, into the perlite, with the nutrient water. Master blend. Then this will drain through, drain under here, come in here. Back. One system, one pump. Now this pump's going to be on a timer two, three times a day, depending on the time of year, etc. Alrighty, as promised, the new and improved way to plumb the buckets. We have the old way, half inch tube, 
quarter inch two, we've got the half inch to one quarter inch tees, and they fed each bucket like that. Now, better way, better flow, is we're gonna have a quarter, quarter, quarter tee, put it onto the half, half, quarter tee, and feed two buckets. It just evens out the flow for the longer runs. You won't have any more problems with the end ones not getting enough water. So that's it. And the sun is set on another project. It took about an hour and a half. Oh, plus about four hours of just having fun. At Complete Growing, we keep it simple, we keep it sustainable, we keep it affordable, and most of all, we keep it real. So join our growing community by subscribing and clicking on that notification bell because you don't want to miss a thing.